In this video, we're going to talk about how to calculate the holding period in the stock received by a transferor in a Section 351 transaction. So if you remember, with a Section 351 transaction, the transferors are going to transfer property in exchange for a corporation's stock. Now the question is, what is the holding period in this stock received, right? So let's say you do a Section 351 transaction and you receive stock in a corporation. Is this going to be long term or is it going to be short term if you were going to sell the stock, let's say immediately or six months later or so forth? So the question is, whatever property you transferred to the corporation in, in exchange for that stock, is the holding period of that property, let's say you had held the property for three years, is that going to be used to determine whether the stock, if you were to sell it, would generate a long-term or short-term capital gain. I know that's really confusing. Let's jump into an example. It'll make it a little bit easier to understand. So let's pretend that you own a Ferris wheel. You own a Ferris wheel that you purchased two years ago. And why that's gonna become relevant, we're gonna talk about in a little bit. So you own this Ferris wheel and it cost you, your adjusted basis in the Ferris wheel is $100,000. And then the fair market value of that Ferris wheel is $975,000. So you're gonna create a corporation called Seven Flags Amusement Park, and you're going to transfer the Ferris wheel to the corporation in exchange for all 100 shares. So you own 100% of the company, so then you meet uh, the control test of Section 351, you're transferring property, a Ferris wheel, in exchange solely for stock, and you have more than 80% control immediately afterwards. So this is a Section 351 transaction. Now, let's look at the basis in the stock received. So the basis is gonna be the adjusted basis of the property that's being transferred. That's $100,000, right? That was the cost or the adjusted basis of that Ferris wheel. So that's $100,000. There's no gain recognized in the transfer. There's no boot received, no money received from the corporation and no liabilities. So your basis in the stock, your basis in the stock received is going to be $100. Now we need to determine your holding period. You might say, well, why does this matter? Who cares what the holding period is? Well, let's just, let's just pretend that immediately after this Section 351 transaction, you turn around and you sell this stock. All right, so you sell it, let's say for $975,000. So that's your amount realized is $975,000. And then you're gonna subtract your adjusted basis, which we just calculated, which is $100,000. And so that's gonna give you a gain of $875,000. And you're selling stock, so this is gonna be a capital gain. So we've got a capital gain here. And the question is, is this a long-term capital gain or is it a short-term capital gain, right? And that, that, could, that matters because are you gonna get preferential tax treatment in terms of when you're netting your capital gains and losses and so forth and short-term and long-term. We'll make another video where we talk about the, the distinction between short-term capital gains and losses and, and, and long-term. But for right now, just uh, take it on faith that it matters that whether it's short term or long term, this $875,000 gain. And so to determine the holding period, it depends what type of asset, what type of property was transferred to the corporation to begin with, right? So there's three types of assets. It could be a capital asset, it could be a Section 1231 asset, or it could be an ordinary asset. So a capital asset would be something like, let's say you had transferred your house. Uh, that would be a capital asset. Uh, Section 1231 asset, is, it would be basically some kind of depreciable property. So this could be the Ferris wheel, right? This could be the Ferris wheel right here, a Section 1231 asset. If you had been using, for example, the Ferris wheel, let's say you'd been a sole, a sole proprietor, you've been running your own amusement park before, and you've been depreciating the Ferris wheel, then it would be a Section 1231 asset. And for a capital asset or Section 1231 asset, the holding period of the asset that you're transferring, tax. And what I mean by tax is, let's say that you sell, that when we talk about you selling the stock, let's say you sell it one day after this, after the Section 351 transaction, all right? So if you do that, the holding period, remember you owned it for two years? Remember we said you'd already owned the Ferris wheel for two years? So we're gonna add that two years to the one day after the Section 351 transaction when you sell the property. So your holding period would be two years and one day because you're selling one day after the Section 351 transaction and you owned it for two years coming into the Section 351 transaction. So because it is one year or longer, 
that you have owned the property, then it would be a long-term a long-term capital gain. Okay? Now, let's say that it, the first will was an ordinary asset. Now, an ordinary asset could be a lot of things, uh, l but let me just give you one example here that could be relevant to the first will. Let's say it had been inventory. So inventory is an ordinary asset. And so if the Ferris wheel, if you had owned Ferris wheels and basically were buying and selling them, and so this Ferris wheel was like inventory to you, right? So you basically, uh, you bought or you manufactured Ferris wheels and you sold them to amusement parks or something before you started this corporation. Then in that case, if this is inventory, then this uh, Ferris wheel you're transferring would be an ordinary asset. And so there, it would not tack the holding period does not tack for an ordinary asset. And so what that means is if you did the Section 351 transaction and then sold the stock that you receive one day later, your holding period would be one day. You deemed to have owned that stock for one day. The fact that you owned the, two, the, the Ferris wheel for two years before the Section 351 transaction does not get added to this one day. And so, therefore, if you were to sell the stock immediately for, for 975000 and you generate that $875,000 gain, it, it would be short term. So, it matters whether how the, the assets were classified. Now, if you end up where you'd had actually multiple types of assets and so forth, it can, it can get really complicated. Uh, for example, if you're tra transferring some capital assets, some uh, Section 1231 and some ordinary assets, and then you basically end up splitting among the different shares. Uh, some could be uh, you know, short-term and some could be long-term and you allocate among the shares.